Hi, my name is Darren. I'm one of the co-founders of Empool and Leak. Today we're going to talk about content strategy. First of all, what does strategy mean? So a strategy is a future plan. Um, it's a set of rules or steps that can be followed to kind of reach a desired goal. The important thing with strategy is that it is flexible because things change all the time. For example, competitors um, may change their strategies and that uh, requires you to change yours um, and various events can happen that require a change in strategy. Um, so those strategies are long-term plan, it must still be changeable. Um, the result of a content strategy is going to be a high-level calendar for the next 6 to 12 months. So before you can start creating a content strategy, there's a couple of things that you need. First of all, you need to understand the brand's goals. Are they trying to create leads? Are they trying to create customers? Are they just trying to get followers? Or are they trying to create advocates, as an example? Then, uh, how are they currently doing in reaching those goals? Um, are they far off or are they nearby? Then, what other content do they have? And what is the state of that content? Can it be reused? Uh, and then, how is that uh, content performing if they do have content? Is it actually doing the job that it's needed to do? Then, what is their budget? Budget is an important factor because it's going to um, kind of result in, in what type of content they can create. Is it only written or can they do video and infographics as an example? And how much can they create? Are they going to be posting several times a week or kind of only once in a while? Then you need to know their personas and the campaigns that, they, that they're targeting. If they do not have personas and campaigns, then you need to go and create them. What other marketing activities are they doing? Because that's going to impact your content strategy. And last of all, a lot of companies seem to have social media run separately from their content strategy, which is always a bad idea. Um, but if they are doing that, you need to understand what is their social media plan. So what are you going to do in this process of creating content strategy? Um, you're going to have to digest all the factors that we're going to discuss now. Um, and, the, and once you've considered the brand goals and the personas and the campaigns and everything or seasonal activities, um, essentially come up with a content strategy, which kind of looks a little bit like that uh, table that you see in the screen now. So everything starts with personas. A persona is essentially a, a profile of a person that you're targeting. Um, what you'll need to know is how many personas are you targeting? Are you going to give them equal attention? Um, or are there some that are more important than others for the brand? Um, and then if this is an extension of a content strategy, um, you'll have insight into how persona has responded to content before. Um, so that's an important factor to know how your personas are responding so you can come up with a better strategy. So for each persona, um, you get different stages of buying. First of all, I'll start with the bottom of funnel um, stage of buying. This is when the customer knows exactly what they want. Um, so if they were to go to Google, they would be typing in your the product name um, or product category that you fall into, and they're essentially comparing you to competitors. Then there is content that addresses the middle of funnel. Um, this is uh, where the person is searching for a solution that you know you can solve, but they're not yet calling it by the product name or the um, product category that you that you kind of look after. The last uh, area of content is top of funnel, where you know that this persona is the perfect customer for you, but they don't even know that they need you yet. Um, so the important part here is that you need to focus your, your content strategy on a kind of a 70-20-10 rule or close to that. So that means 70% of the time you need to be creating content, um, targeting the perfect persona that doesn't even know they need you yet. So that creates a very large um, potential customer base. Then 20% of your time creating content on challenges um, that your product or services um, solve um, so that when people are searching for that, they find you. And then last of all, 10% um, on, on, on your actual product. Um, so this is for people that already know what they, what they want. Um, unfortunately, what I have to break to brands all the time is that people don't want to read about your product. Um, they want to read about things that interest them. 
And I think it's one of the biggest mistakes that brands make is the content they produce is all is basically glorified brochures. There's an example here with an accountant. Now, if you were an accountant, would you read five reasons you need accounting software? Or would you read how the new tax laws will affect the consumer? Most likely you would read the second. The next stage is to work through the campaigns in your content strategy. So this comes directly from your personas. And if you don't have these yet, it's a very important step to do before you create content strategy. So you can see for each stage of buying, top of funnel, middle of funnel, and bottom of funnel, um, there's examples here of an estate agent um, that uh, the type of content that you'd be creating for each of those stages of buying. So bottom of funnel is about the product you sell, so property here. Middle of funnel is he's not searching for property yet, but he is looking for potential new developments. And then top of funnel, what interests the estate agent? Advice on marketing and branding. Within each one of these campaigns, there are conversion assets. Now, the point of a conversion asset is to help um, you as a, as, a, as a brand or strategist um, know the, the, the readers um, that are reading your content, what stage of buying they are at. So they generally come in the format of ebooks, white papers, guides, calculators, quizzes, checklists, that type of thing. And for each uh, campaign, you can have multiple of these assets. Um, and over time, you'll create all of them, but you'll start off by creating one or, one or two of them. And that will, as I say, uh, help you identify where in the buying stage is this particular reader. So we call them assets, um, conversion assets to be specific. Now, you may think an infographic or video is an asset. It is an asset, but those are attraction assets, not conversion assets, because people don't have to exchange an email address in order to get that asset. It's just purely for attraction. Really, really importantly is if you're trying to build a database or increase leads or increase sales, you should never be creating content or put in a campaign in your content strategy until you have a way to convert uh, a reader because otherwise you're just creating a lot of content that's going to go out there and no one's going to, you're not going to know who's, who's actually reading it. Okay, the next stage is around the type of content you need. So as somebody goes through a buying process, so initially they're busy uh, just browsing their Twitter feed or browsing kind of news sites and what's going to interest them there is blog articles, PR articles, infographics and so on. But as they become closer to the selling, to the actual buying stage, um, they're going to need a different type of content. They're going to need pricing guides, um, fact sheets, re return investment calculators. They're going to be interested in case studies. It's one of the biggest mistakes that brands make is when they launch a new product, they immediately go and create a brochure. And you can see here that a brochure is actually um, kind of really far down the buying cycle. So um, when you're busy developing your content strategy, you need to make sure that the assets that you create in um, address the different stages of buying. So just to highlight there, um, so it goes from blog articles, then when they start to consider things, ebooks, guides, white papers, then when they start to uh, compare vendors and compare solutions, that's when demos and, uh, and brochures, trials, webinars, and so on become useful. And when they get really close to buying, that's when they want to kind of look at case studies and testimonials, analyst reports, and then just before they make that purchase, they act, that's when they want to look at pricing and return on investment. So when it comes to content strategy, there's a really important concept that I relate to the top 40 on, uh, on the radio as an example. So when a new song is launched, um, it gets a huge amount of airplay. So the, um, the concentric circles there, you'll see, um, imagine them spinning round and around and around. Um, and then a song that was launched the month before gets played daily. Um, and last of all, kind of the, the really, really old music, such as the Beatles there, maybe gets played once a year or on certain radio stations, maybe never at all. Um, so think of your conversion assets as the same thing. When you create a new ebook or white paper or calculator, um, you're going to go and promote that a lot. Um, and to promote it, you're going to be creating content, uh, social media content, blog content, and so on. And then as um, you kind of launch a new 
um, uh, conversion asset or as that other one gets older, you're going to start promoting it less and less and less. As it moves down the concentric circles, um, you'll also that will also flag you to go and review and see if that content is still relevant. The other things that influ influence a content strategy is um, seasonal events such as summer, summer winter, um, Christmas, bank holidays, New Year's, as an example. Maybe there's a product promotion or product launch that your brand is doing. Um, other campaigns such as above-the-line advertising campaigns that a traditional agency might be doing. Um, events such as the Olympics, Soccer World Cup, exhibitions, conferences, trade shows that the brand is taking part in. Um, then really important is buying cycles. In B2B in particular, a lot of brands um, will plan their purchasing and strategy in quarter four, and then they'll go and make the purchase in quarter one and quarter two. So that would um, help you determine what content needs to be created. And then there's events such as back to school um, that also influence your content strategy. So what do you have to do next to build your strategy? is take into account all these factors. So take into account your personas, your buying stages, your campaigns, your conversion assets, seasonal events, um, the different uh, type of content required at different stages of buying, and build out a 6 to 12 month plan. So to end off, a task for you to go and complete to test what you've learned. Um, go to offers.empool.com forward slash academy dash content dash strat to download your exercise. Thank you.